Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Music on the Delaware's seventh spring virtual coffee house concert. We're delighted to have you join us for the show, and we have a wonderful show tonight for you with Dave Bram and Belden Bullock, a combination of piano and, and bass jazz uh, uh, music, and I think you're really going to love it. Uh, before we start, though, I do need to go to a couple of housekeeping chores, and uh, I, I want you to pay attention to this. For, we have a, a problem sometimes. Uh, make sure you're all muted and don't unmute yourself unnecessarily uh, because that will interfere with the show and it interfere with the performance. So it don't, you, sometimes people do it by accident, but just want to make sure you stay muted during the concert and the break. We will have a chance at the after the music uh, at the end of the show to ask some questions and to be unmuted. Um, and now, so that was just very important. If you uh, haven't used the chat function, you can see the word chat at the bottom of your screen. Click on that and that will appear at the right of the, on the, of the screen. Uh, that's a spot where you can send a message to someone either, either privately or to everyone. Just type your message, hit return, and you'll see it appear above. During the concert, if you have an issue of receiving the broadcast, you can direct a question to Sarah Letty, who is our technical person for tonight. Uh, if you would like to ask a question of the performers, you can direct your question to me or the musicians, and we will, we will present those questions at the end of the concert. You'll also notice a reaction symbol at the bottom of your right of your screen. This can be used to, to show the appreciation to the musicians for what they're doing. You know, it's really an odd thing here. We don't, we can't, they can't hear us clap. You can do this, you know, and they'll see that. That's nice. But you can also use this uh, function at the bottom to show your appreciation with uh, you know, uh, up a symbol uh, or a, a heart or whatever it is you want to do. And that's really appreciated because this is a communal event too. And we really want to stress that communal aspect to it. Uh, I also want to mention that the concert's going to be recorded and the video will be archived on the MOD Facebook page. If you don't want to have your face there, you can turn your video off. So that's just important. I think that's it. So we're really excited to hear Dave and and uh, and and Bellin, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna turn it, turn it over to you guys. Take it away, Dave and Belden. Thank you. B flat blues. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Um, that was a tune called Bluesology, written by one of the great improvisers in, in, in modern jazz, Milt Jackson. He, he was a vibes player. He was most, most well known for playing with the modern jazz quartet. Right now we'd like to continue with a Richard Rogers tune. Um, this is called Have You Met Miss Jones? F, pedal C for intro. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be joined today by my friend, Belden, Belden Bullock. Uh, actually, before we... Um, I'm going to check the chat here while I'm talking. Oh. Before we... Um, before we... Uh, before the plague... Uh, Belden and I, everybody in New York works with a lot of different groups. Well, that's the way you should do it if you want to make a living. But we, uh, we were working with a couple of different groups. We ended up working a couple of times a week, yeah. right, right before the pandemic hit. And then now nothing since. So it's great to see him again. Yeah. And um, right now, we'd like to feature Belden. He's going to play the melody on a tune called There Is No Greater Love. Uh-oh. see if I remember that one. <laughs> Actually honored to have Belden here because he's played with some great piano players like Ahmed Jamal and and um, Abdullah Ibrahim and mm -hmm. all those kind of people. So he's yeah. really disappointed that I'm here. Ah, yeah. come on. Man. Anyway, we'd like to uh, we'd like to uh, um, continue with a, a great great ballad. This is called "Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans." Ah. Right on. Thank you. 
You know what it miss, means to Miss New Orleans. Um, next, we're going to do. Let me see if there's anything I should know about in the chat. Oh, okay. Hi, Terry. My uh, friend from elementary school is viewing, is uh, tuning in. Wow. Um, anyway, um, we're um, a lot of you. Um, if you know the name of Vince Garaldi, you probably. Um, you probably know it from him writing the um, all that jazz piano music from the Peanuts um, TV specials. Mm -hmm. He he wrote uh, um, you know all the music for that. Uh, he was also in the '60s. He was one of the first people, along with Stan Getz and a few other people, to bring Brazilian music to this country. So we're going to do something that he wrote, and he performed it with a Brazilian guitarist named Bola Siete, and um, and it's called um, Ginza Samba. They can't do you There you go. Here's the half. Thank you. 
<laughs> Here's one of my very favorite uh, jazz standards. Uh, this is a tune called Old Folks. I got four measures, then we're right, right there. Okay. Okay. to do one more tune and then uh, Jim has a few uh, comments for you and then we'll come back and play some more. Um, the, this next uh, tune we're going to do, um, ever since the 40s, um, jazz musicians have been taking the chord changes or the harmonies from standard tunes like a tune by Gershwin or Cole Porter or something and writing their own melodies over the top um, like um, Charlie Parker wrote Donna Lee over the top of, um, what's that called? Uh, Back Home in Indiana. In Indiana. <laughs> and uh, Monk wrote Hackensack over top of Lady Be Good. And uh, Tad Dameron wrote um, Misty Night over top of uh, September in the Rain. So uh, it, it's all like that. But one that I found really interesting was Wes Montgomery took the changes to Summertime 
And I think the first time I heard it, I thought, oh, this he, he wrote the whole thing. But then the more I listened, I said, oh, it's summertime. <laughs> but uh, this is his... Uh, this is his tune, um, Wes Montgomery, the great guitarist, and it's called Four on Six. So, I guess that means four four time on six strings or something like that. I, I guess. Forgot. Yeah. yeah. What are you based on? <clears throat> One, two. One, two, three. Oh. West Montgomery's four on six and I'm going to mute myself and Jim is going to take okay. hello everyone that was wonderful Dave and Belden we really enjoyed it that's if anything that's music that lifts the soul and really you can tell from your enthusiasm and spirit it really is contagious and the, the music is contagious and it's really great so thank you for, for coming and helping us enjoy that uh, just a couple of announcements from Music on the Delaware. We have one more virtual coffeehouse concert this May. It's going to be uh, Sunday, May the 16th. We will hear a local band called Blue Tonic, and they play blues. Uh, this last concert will actually be presented from the Walton Theater space, but we'll still have no audience. But keep tuned to us for the fall. But this will be the last concert for this series. And then the summer will be off. 
Be besides this coffee house, there's, however, another event in May. Music on the Delaware will present another main stage concert on Saturday, May 8th, featuring Reggie, featuring Reggie Harris. Reggie is an innovative guitarist, creative vocalist, engaging storyteller, and lecturer. Born and raised in Philadelphia, he now makes his home in the Catskills. You can find those details on the Walton Theater website. That's www.waltontheater.org. Check it out. And we hope we see you there. I should also, we just also want to say something tonight that this was tonight's concert is the 30th virtual coffee house event in Music on the Delaware's effort to bring music to our loyal audiences. We offered the first free virtual concert on March 26, 2020. And so we have been at it for just over a year. But yet by the end of the year, uh, by the end of May of this year, we will have presented 31 coffee house concerts. That does not include some of the main co concerts too on the main stage. And we engaged a total of 49 musicians. I think we just wanna take this minute to thank all those musicians who have entertained us so wonderfully during this difficult times. Uh, you see on the, the screen now, the, the uh, uh, Venmo address you can give uh, uh, a tip and donation to the to the wonderful musicians for tonight to show your appreciation and they certainly have are pre pre presenting an excellent performance tonight so we hope you can help them and support them uh, we offer these concerts our coffeehouse concerts are all free but tips and performers are very very welcome so enough well enough announcements let's get back to Dave and Bell once again Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to play another 15 minutes and then we're going to save five uh, minutes at the end and you can, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, all right, we're going to, um, you know, in this, in this, uh, well, a lot of great artists have uh, crossed out of their genre in order to enhance their you know, performances. Dizzy Gillespie was most famous for, um, it, uh, it was most famous for uh, adding Cuban music to jazz when he met these Cuban drummers in New York. And, um, and um, a lot of people have, uh, you know, and uh, the modern jazz quartet combined like European classical music with uh, jazz and stuff. Um, in the 1960s, um, uh, I think his regular fans might have been a little shocked, but uh, Ray Charles started recording country tunes. You know, most famous probably is I Can't Stop Loving You. And uh, even um, Willie Nelson said that uh, once once Ray Charles started doing that, the, the, mu the audience for country music expanded. But I'm going to play uh, one of those that he recorded that I really like, and this is called You Don't Know Me. It was originally... Uh, written by, um, I think, Eddie Arnold, but um, Ray, Ray put his stamp on it in the 60s. Uh, right on it. No, I'll set it up.
<laughs> you gotta stop rocking, man. <laughs> you hear that? Is it rocking? You, I think. Oh. I don't know. I think you. I'm hearing a squeak. I thought it was your your bench rocking. Ah. I don't know. That's what Maybe. <laughs> you okay. Know some tapping to it. All right. <laughs> um. This next tune was written by uh, probably one of the greatest bass players um, in jazz, Ray Brown. Um, and uh, it's interesting in that it not, it not only is it uh, um, a, a jazz waltz, but it has uh, gospel type changes well, similar to something like we, what we just heard. But this is Ray Brown's tune called Gravy Waltz. And if you uh, ever get to hear a vocal version of it, uh, there are words, and uh, Steve Allen wrote the words. Oh. <laughs> In C? Yeah. for a couple more short ones and then um, we'll be taking some questions let me just uh, 
look at this chat for a minute. Uh, I do have some squeak in there. You have to put some three in one oil in there. Uh, okay, yeah, there's some there's some questions in the chat. We'll get to them in a minute. Um, right now, um, we'd like to do uh, another uh, Brazilian tune. This is called O Barquino, or, or Little Boat. You know the, um, the uh, intro? No, I'll follow you again. Okay. What key were you? Uh, B flat. Okay. So it's a, so it's a sequence, you know, it's okay. B flat, and then in A right, flat, right, and then right, in right. G flat, then it turn around, and that's the tune. it's five till we were going to play another short one but maybe we shouldn't uh you don't want to go over right go ahead all right uh we're going to end with uh, um um we're going to end with a tune uh that i wrote it's a it's a blues head and uh, um i also play jazz on the organ uh, about 10 years ago i got the opportunity to record a cd i see that the producer of that cd is listening tonight hi scott uh, but um, this is a this is a shuffle blues, and uh, it's called loping along. So.
Imagine a buzzard loping along after yeah, yeah. he eats the roadkill. <laughs> Good imagery, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can, uh, can you hear me, Sarah? Okay, well, thank you so much, Dave and Belden. Um, you know, this was really great. And what, uh, is that where? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what, what, I, is what was really interesting, I just want to comment and thank you for, for your concert tonight. But, you know, on Zoom, I know it's not in person, but we really, the, the, it really, Zoom did capture you two tonight up close and your collaboration together. It was really excellent. I, I don't think we've seen that before so, so well. Plus your enthusiasm for the music. And I mean, that really just communicated so well. So anyway, thank you very much on behalf of Music of the Delaware. But also now we have a question from uh, Ms. Jean Withrow. And, <laughs> and she asked uh, both of you actually, we know from Dave, from your resume, your press release and everything that you've been doing this for like 50 years, which is kind of hard to believe, I guess. And uh, you look like a young man like me, you know, so I don't see that, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, 
that they, they, how did you get into this music and also Belden, you know, how did you, what track early on how, or whenever you started this, what, what uh, led both of you into this area? Can you unmute yourself? Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, well, for, for myself, um, as I mentioned, I, I also play the organ. And when I was uh, a young kid, well, actually, I, I started out on the guitar. I think I was playing like when I was like 10 or 11 years old. But then um, a lot of the pop music uh, of that time, you know, um, um, Junior Walker and uh, Stevie Winwood with... Uh, uh, give me some love with that. They they had Hammond organs were, were big then, and so you know I, I started to really like that sound. And then when I heard Jimmy Smith play jazz on the organ, I I wanted to do that. So I've been like I had been approaching that, uh, you know, since I was a young teenager, and um, and there were lots of and I grew up in um, south of Pittsburgh, and where I lived there were just like lots of gigs and lots of places to play. So I was already playing in nightclubs when I'm, you know, 14, 15 years old. And, and uh, it was a, it was a good way to develop. How about you, Belden? Well, I, my listening was always ahead of playing. I, before I started playing, I used to hear my older sister and brother. They would play a lot of music around the house. My sister was a big uh, Jimmy Smith, West Montgomery fan. And I would hear this music and my brother got into like Miles Davis and so I would hear this stuff at a young age, but until uh, junior high school, I started playing electric bass with a, a buddy of mine who said, you should join us. He was a guitar player, is a guitar player, and there were two, two guitar players and myself. So I started playing guitar a little bit and they said, no, nah, we need a bass player. So I started <laughs> playing the electric bass and then it went on from there. In high school, I got uh, more serious with the jazz, and I had two fantastic teachers there who uh, were a theory teacher and that, and they got me into playing the upright bass and talked to me about going to Berkeley and those sort of things. And um, one thing to, led to another, and then I went to New York, and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> here we are, years later. Yeah. I'm playing with Dave in, the, in his living room. <laughs> <laughs> and there's... And it's a real pleasure to play with Belden. Uh, I mean, there there's hundreds of great bass players in in New York City, but you know, it's nice to play with with somebody who listens to what you do. And we even have like a little cues. He he always knows when I'm going to go into this one certain p a progression because I'll just look at him and say, <laughs> "You know what to do," and we go into it, even though that's not the standard changes yeah, yeah. yeah we've had a long I think, you, I think you communicated that you know mm -hmm. you communicated that uh, and through your presentations you know the music um I, somebody else commented too they said is it true there's something in the music in pittsburgh uh in the water i mean somebody yeah. commented on it the water yeah it's a lot of <laughs> well the, yeah we'll it's that, we'll leave that go but but there was another uh curious there was another curious question that said uh, something about that uh, you have another interest and passion for Irish traditional music and something called sleeve lucre music, slides and pencil. is that true? That is, yeah, that's very true. Like I, uh, well, I was teaching music in a, in a um, in, in a public school, and I I was teaching in in one building where I just p taught the band instruments, and then I wanted to, to transfer to another building where I would also do orchestra, so. I started to take violin lessons in order to do that. And the guy I took violin lessons from, this guy, Dave Romellis, he, he, cause I knew him cause he had played jazz gigs when he plays everything on the violin, not only classical music, but he can play jazz. He, you know, does all kind of fiddle styles. And so he, he taught me some fiddle tunes. I started to really like the Irish stuff. And then, um, you know, pretty soon I, I, uh, so it became like a pretty serious hobby. And I, uh, went to the Catskills. They have a, week up there every week and then i met this guy matt cranish who's from cork in ireland and he he um he specializes in um the uh, music of the schlieve lucre region um schlieve in the irish language means mountain and lucre means uh ru the the rushes so it's like the rushy mountains and um it's the border between county Kerry and county cork and they have a specific style there so i started studying with him you know, every chance I could when he would come to the States. And, and so I just kind of got really into that, that style of Irish fiddle. 
Mm. Oh, that's that's very interesting to me. And, and uh, also, uh, another question was uh, after COVID, and people might want to see you play locally. Is there specific places that you you are known to hang out in? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a tough question. Yeah. Well, um, I have. Oops. I think I. Yeah. You're still, you're you. still muted there. You're still muted. Okay. That's better. Okay. So I got my second vaccine March 6th and two weeks later, somebody called me for a gig. And so I took it and uh they're starting to you know open up the restrictions in new jersey and restaurants and and nightclubs so i've played uh three or four times at a place down in red bank new jersey uh it, 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 it's an italian place called napoli and um i also played at a place in long branch that was it, it's a place where they make whiskey it's a long branch distillery <laughs> this sunday mother's day i'm going to play at a place in in new brunswick called deltas with a very good singer, Pat Tandy. You know Pat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Pat She's Tandy. And um, we're going to play that. From, so some gigs are opening up, but uh, yeah, it's it's not like it was. Before before COVID, I was playing four or five times a week. You, you know, you probably were too. And yeah. have you been doing much since? He's I vaccinated have... as well. That's why we're not masked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here and there, I've been doing a few duo things that... Uh... A restaurant in Jersey at Cliffside Park, but uh, it's you know it's slow, slow recovery. But we're we're hope, hopeful that we get back there. But it's it's things are still pretty sparse right now. Yeah, would would we see things on Facebook or how would people know? It yeah, it? I usually post my gigs on Facebook. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's a good. One. Uh, well, that's good. I, is there any? Maybe we. Yeah, I think that's the questions we have, but. Is, if there's anyone else who would like to uh, unmute themselves and ask a question, uh, that would be fine too, right now. Anyone there would like to do that? Okay, I mean, I guess that's probably it. We really enjoyed this so much, David Belden. I, I hope that we can continue to see you and hear you in other places and uh, hope we can bring you back again to a music on the Delaware. Thank you. Thanks and, so much. Uh, Thank you. Maybe we can come up to the Walton Theater and play live sometimes. Yeah. Please do. Please that do. Would that, would be, that would be fantastic. We'd love yeah. it. We'll bring a drummer. We'll bring a drummer. Okay. <laughs> the drums are too much for Zoom. It, it doesn't work. Yeah. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's, well, true. that's a great offer. Okay. We will keep that definitely in mind. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank, so thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Yep. Good.